We are the children of the Onondaga Nation. These are our faces. Iroquois, Haudenosaunee, people of the Longhouse. We are the singers of this generation, struggling to keep our ways alive. This is our story. We are tradition's children. They sang. Will we sing our beautiful traditional songs? They dance. Will we know how to dance our dances? They conduct the ceremonies of our journey. Which ones of us will follow them and lead? They healed my brother and my aunt. Will we recognize the medicine of our people? Will we hear the wind, rain, trees, and the grass? Will we know how to listen? Yes, we will. We are traditions children. Those before us lived with the natural law as their spiritual guide. Laws of peace, harmony with nature, and a sense of sharing and community. Will we live as they lived? We are traditions children. I was born here amongst my people during the strawberry moon. In Anadaga, my name is Dewanakwa, which means she picks the words out. My clan is Oditni Seal, Snipe, like my mother and her mother before her. The women carry the family line in our society. Our clan is our extended family. I go to the longhouse with my family for religious ceremonies. I'm one of the original Americans. The English call us Six Nations. The French call us Iroquois. Most of my people live in six territories in what is now New York State and Canada. We are Mohawks, Oneidas, Senecas, Cayugas, Tuscaroras, and Onondagas, Six Nations. Onondaga sits in the center of New York State, the capital of the Six Nation Iroquois Confederacy. We are separate from the United States, a sovereign nation, independent. We have no police force, customs, or border guards, and we travel through the other nations of the world on our own Iroquois passport. Everyone in our community is equal. Clan mothers, chiefs, faith keepers, and our community members. The lives of our families are rich in love, mutual respect, laughter, and sacred traditional values, Haudenosaunee values. But people have many misconceptions about who we really are. I feel, I feel it come from books and uh, movies where they got a whole bunch of people running around more hooping, living in teepees and stuff like that, you know? Drugs, alcohol, stereotypes that all Indians are drunk, drunk, drunkies or druggies or whatever. And sometimes some people live up to them and some people don't. And I'm very proud of people that don't live up to those things and they don't really see us as like a normal person and um, that everything we do is like not com it's not a common thing but i guess everybody does have their own beliefs though and when you go out to another place and see how they do their thing that may seem funny but it's just a everyday thing that you do Today, we try to educate people to eliminate those misconceptions and stereotypes, and it can be a full-time job. And they see me as a kind of a special person when I explain my traditions and stuff, and, you know, and my name, you know, that's really different, so I, I end up explaining that a lot, you know, Hainigewas, it's not common at all, it means clear the sky, so, you know, and I, they find that really interesting, so. All different kinds of people make up our nation. We leave our footprints on Mother Earth in accordance with the different gifts given to us by the Creator. But we all learn who we are and what's important to us from our elders, at school, and at the Longhouse through observation. We're connected to past and future generations through our spiritual Indian names and our traditions. We are part of who we are. Every Longhouse child uh, has an Indian name, and there are certain days in our in our ceremonies that that happens, and that's the um, duty of the clan mothers is to give them names, and they, they can't you can't give them just any name; it has to be a clan name. 
a, a name that has been handed down in the clans for years. Probably, my name is probably 2,000 years old, the Vazanta. We keep our traditional way of life by celebrating the yearly cycle of seasons in our ceremonies. That's where we give thanks for all the Creator has put on earth for us. In fact, our former Taradaho, Chief Leon Shenandoah, believed that our life's purpose is to give thanks. As our cultural ways continue, so does our identity. Our elders share with us things they were taught by their elders, memories so old that dust hangs in the sunlight of their recollections. You talk to your elders and they, they tell you stories, things that should happen, things you learn the way that things should happen on a traditional point of view. Um, the schooling comes in as moving forward as far as uh, society and in general with keeping up with the technology of today. Uh, it deals with more um, interpreting the traditions and um, almost actually uh, modifying them to help adapt to the new environment. Our elders are there to teach us. They're there to show us right from wrong, tell us when we're doing something wrong. Uh, the role of the kids is to learn, have fun, and do and do what they're told, you know, just to, just to the elders and the women. There, I think that on the nation, it's really family-centered, and everybody has a big family, and everybody stays within their family, but off the nation, it's more like your mother and your father, not your grandmother, your grandfather. We dance in two worlds, our own, as constant as our ceremonies, and in that of the non-Indian, where too often we're mysterious curiosities. Most of us start our formal education at the Onondaga Nation School, kindergarten through eighth grade. In fact, since fall 1996, our school boasts a large new addition. Here at ONS, we learn the same things as other students our age in other districts but we also learn our own ways. Young Onondaga artist Clint Shenandoah designed the artwork in the atrium of our new nation school edition. The eight clan representations, the giant snapping turtle, Hanyakda, in the center representing Turtle Island, this country that we share, and the hand-painted pictures on each post representing the 13 seasonal moons of the year. The atrium area has become another spiritual gathering place for our community, as well as a constant reminder of who we are. I always retain uh, who I was and who I am along with me, and it's, I guess that's what Onondaga kind of uh, enculturates uh, uh, within itself as a whole, the whole nation within itself, I think, enculturates that pride. Uh, and so I carry that with me, you know, in, into the different worlds. Clint feels that his designs for the school are a chance to give back to his community, something symbolic and long-lasting, as his ancestors have given him. Well, there's a lot of Native American um, employees or, that are working there, and um, they stress, you know, the way we should live, and um, I think the culture and language class are just great. I think that I learned more about myself. I learned a lot about where I come from so that I can tell people that I meet from the city that are Native American that really don't know about their heritage. I can, you know, share a piece with them what I learned here. I grow up valuing, valuing different things. I don't know what those things would be in the city, but I know what they are on a territory, which would be um, giving thanks to your creator, um, being, just being thankful, um, being proud of who you are, um, um, being able to go next door and ask for someone for help. Uh, the kids learn a lot of uh, different um, stories and um, all the different the teachings that have been brought through orally through the, um, since the beginning of our people. Um, through the language, they're learning the different phrases, how to speak to each other, um, how to do the opening and closing for the ceremonies. Well, we learn by going to Longhouse and attending our ceremonies. We learn there how we're supposed to carry on that. And in school, 
our teachers, we have like our own language class. And so they teach us there too, the way we're supposed to be. And, you know, we learn how to make corn soup and, you know, stuff like that, that it's fun and, but it's the way of our life, you know. Behat ka das, Chief Irving Paulus Jr. sometimes talks with our students as do other people from inside as well as outside of our community. The world is our classroom. And one of the traditions of our people is symbolism. We draw pictures and we have things that remind us of, of what uh, we need to, uh, to remember our history. We have wampum belts, we have wampum beads that carry messages. And today we're going to talk about a condolence cane. A condolence cane has a picture of all of the 50 chiefs of the Haudenosaunee. The oldest living chief at Onondaga is Ha He Ha, Louis Farmer. Speaking fluently in our language, he enjoys telling the story of our people from the time of the peacemaker and Hayen Huata, when the Iroquois Confederacy was formed. The peacemaker established the great law of peace by which we live. Because many lessons are learned throughout the story, it takes days, even weeks, to tell it properly. Guayani, clan mother Audrey Shenandoah, one of our language and cultural teachers, translates the chief's words into English so we can all understand it better. After all, we're just learning our language. After he had prepared the deer for the meal, he had saved the horns and put them over on the side somewhere. And then when, they, when the man fully accepted and understand and was teaching the peaceful way to the people, then he placed the antlers on his head and he gave him a title. And that's how the first chief was named. Our ways and stories are basically the same today as they were for our grandparents and their grandparents before them care to the generations by word of mouth. The commitment to keep traditions alive and pass them on has always been solid. It's the dreams and visions that may be altered with time. Over the years, everything has changed. We've modernized, but our religion still stays the same. We still give thanks. We still try and be as nice to each other as we can. And although the outside world is trying to change everything, we can still look forward to that. The role of women in our community hasn't changed through the centuries either. They're still the leaders of our society. They appoint the chiefs, and they're the primary teachers of the children. They're the main ones who deal with different problems and, and things that, that happen. And outside, you know, you hear about women getting beat up a lot. And it's really kind of sad. And. You know, when Christopher Columbus came over, he said we were uncivilized. But when you look around now, it's, it makes you wonder, you know? There's also a, there's a kind of um, traditional kind of bond with um, my mother. And, and it seems with uh, most of my friends here on the reservation, we all have that same type of, of bond and um, love that's just and total respect for um, the women in general. And it, that's pretty much the case around the reservation. We've learned many important lessons. One thing that's important to me is my language. I like to keep my language going and how, how to speak it and everything. Because that's one thing that I'm lacking when I go up through another, to the Lafayette. That's one thing I don't get to do every day. I don't get to be taught a different word or how to say different things. I think respecting other people and others' beliefs, um, respecting your elders was just the most important, I think, for me. To stand up for who you are and to um, be proud of who you are. I've learned that we have to respect Mother Earth that's like the main one, and that we have to respect our elders. The main thing is respect. They need to 
know who they are, know their ways, their language, the history, because the history that we have had in the past, what has been uh, done to us with the early Europeans that came over, um, hasn't been that good. But, but if you know that kind of history, it strengthens you because uh, it makes you proud as to who you are. In days gone by, life for the Haudenosaunee held some different challenges than those of today. As a nation, they seem to have been stronger in the past. Um, not saying that we're not strong now, but saying that um, they're tended, the younger generations are having a little more trouble with all the, you know, with the TV and the radio and, and the ability to, to have um, so many options available. They're kind of wandering, kind of wondering, where am I going, what am I going to do? In my grandmother's days, um, when she went to school, in her early years, she had to, um, you know, she couldn't, in, her, in the school, she couldn't talk really her language or do anything with her culture. It was a different kind of strain on them. Theirs was more of a uh, Christian, um, force, force, forcing the Christian religion on them, and that was through the schools and, you know, even through uh, brutal force, they, they would get beaten into believing Christianity. We have many ways, traditions, within our homes and our community that most non-Indians don't have. When we're very young, we don't realize that these are unique to us. Jean takes her children and grandchildren to pick natural medicine, as her people have done for generations. Okay, this is quote foot. We pick this every summer and every fall because you, you take the leaves of this and dry it and it's excellent for cough medicine. And we don't take a lot. We don't take any more than we need. We don't want to pull the roots out so the plant can come back again next year and give us more medicine. The children are learning what to pick, how to prepare what they pick, and how to use some of the medicine just through observation. I participate in um, the, you know, the ceremony and I do social dances, and my my mom, she she's like the main person that gets together dancing groups, and we travel sometimes around. Well, for each dance, there's a purpose. Um, we have each dance honor something and give thanks to something. Um, the woman's dance is the main one. Um, that our movements with our feet is we're caressing the Mother Earth. And um, each dance just, you know, it's, it gives a lesson all by itself. Almost always, we wear traditional clothing when we demonstrate dance, as well as when we attend ceremonies or occasions when we're representing our nation. The men wear their gustowe, or headdress, ribbon shirt, breech cloth, leggings, and moccasins. The clothing as well as the beadwork we make by hand, right down to our moccasins. A Wehio and Chantel are part of a family who do fine beadwork. At age nine, both of these girls, with help from their elders, have done the design and all the beadwork on their skirt and leggings, and that's not easy. I used to first draw on a piece of paper to see what it, it would turn out to be, then I would um, draw on a piece of a felt and then think of the colors I wanted and then, then I'd beat it. Chantel says that the best is when people ask her about it. Well, they're just like, oh, did you, did your grandma make that? And I'm like, no, I did. <laughs> In the home of clan mother Audrey Shenandoah, the children show the grandchildren their crafts, and the grandchildren carry on. Her granddaughter, Verna, works with her own children, nieces, nephews, and friends on the repairing and making of new moccasins and beadwork items. On this particular occasion, 
They're preparing their special clothing for upcoming ceremonies. Eighth grade students at the Onondaga Nation School, the boys and the girls, make their own clothing for graduation, just as they both learn to bead, dance, or weave baskets. Baskets play a big part in our lives, for everyday use, for decoration, and for ceremonies. Some families are fine basket makers. Gina works with some of her girls and their friend on time-tested techniques and designs. Like baskets are like kind of like clay work. I mean, you can make them go out. You can make them come in. I mean, you could do. You could form them any shape you want them. Just kind of take your time and keep wetting it. Because mm -hmm. the more you wet it, the more it's gonna um, bend. Let you bend it. Yeah. Tom Ha, renowned Onondaga sculptor, works with his son Charlie on a stone carving. Will Charlie be an artist like his dad? Time will tell. As a student of the Onondaga Nation School. Charlie's encouraged, as are all the students, to create a variety of art and craft projects through his years in attendance. Each year, the Student Art Show exhibits a wide range of outstanding works in assorted media. Many of them are truly amazing. Something else that's often amazing to an outsider is the sight of our little boys, some as young as three or four, learning the game of lacrosse. It's a tradition among our boys and men, not our women. Lacrosse was given to our people by the Creator. It's one of our ways that's resisted change and is a most important tradition in many of our families. It was originally used as a medicine game, played for the pleasure of the Creator, for someone who was ill, or it was played to settle a dispute between our Indian nations. Gaywa Schindler has played lacrosse most of his life and is a talented player, as are his friends, Neil Pollock and Marshall Abrams. Every day I'm involved, you know, it started off as a ceremonial thing, you know, and, you know, right, it, you feel it right here when you play, and playing for the Iroquois Nationals on a world level, you know, it's just overwhelming because, you know, you're representing everyone here, everyone in the Six Nations. Uh, one thing I learned from my father, which I know I'll, I'll pass on, is, uh, well, when I, when I learned how to play lacrosse when I was very little, and um, when I was little, he taught me the, um, the way it should be played, which is hard, and uh, is, is just doing the best you can, whether you win or lose, that, that's not as much of a big deal, as long as you play as, as hard as you can. And every day before, I, before a game, before every game, I, I thank the creator in my own native language, and, and I, um, I give thanks that I can play another game. Gaywas, Neil, and Marshall play lacrosse nationally and internationally. Together, they play with the Iroquois Nationals. Lacrosse, I've learned a lot. Uh, I've learned teamwork, uh, obedience, sportsmanship. It just made me a whole person because it shapes, it shapes, it shapes into a whole person just by all the, uh, the strictness, the the hard work, dedication you have to have. Sometimes the hardest part is um, when you're trying to catch a, when you're trying to check this guy that's running, and he's always spinning on you, can't, can't get him. He's always going, and you can't catch up to him sometimes. I like trying out my backhand and shooting in and getting a lot of cheers from the fans. It's just an all-around good, wholesome, uh, life uh, sport because of all of the things that you can learn from playing the lacrosse game, you know. Um, a person has to keep their body in good health, their mind in good health, and they've got to have the spirit too. Traditionally, girls aren't supposed to play rough sports like lacrosse. We must keep ourselves free from bodily harm because we have the awesome responsibility and honor of bearing children, the future of our nation. So, some of us girls like to play volleyball, run track and play softball, among other things. Well, we do stuff like collecting maple syrup or fat from the trees and making this maple syrup with it. It's a time of hard work, giving thanks to the Creator and having fun. We use the maple syrup we make for a pancake breakfast at the school. 
and we invite the rest of our community to join us. We have dinners at other times of the year as well, where we cook our traditional foods for the community. We may also use the syrup to give to our elders during community give, if there's enough left over. We have a community give where we go out and we give the elders our, the things that we made throughout the year. And that's fun. You know, we get to go all through the res and give out stuff, you know. And, and um, if the elders need help, we help them, you know, sweeping or something, you know. So I think, I think that's one thing that we have that's really fun and teaches us a lot. We also have a community-wide cleanup during our school's spring break. Everyone participates, not because we have to, but because we want to. So that when my children and maybe even their children are grown up, they'll have somewhere nice to live and play. Here at Onondaga, all of us try to keep the seventh generation in mind, those who have yet to be born, our children's children, we all have thoughts about the future of our nation, our people, and our heritage. You know, a lot of the uh, nations have casinos and, you know, th things like that, that that isn't right. You know, that's not even our way to gamble. We are, we are a people. We are here. We're not just, oh, the Onondagas. They live on the res. We're a territory. I hate the word reservation because that's like a place set out for people. We're a territory where we are our own people. And I think people should take us more seriously. The future of the Nadag Nation is in our hands. It looks positive because our young people are going to school, learning our ways, and coming back, they're not not just leaving after experiencing the outside world. They're coming back and trying to make this nation better. I think a knowledge of who we are and where we came from, um, and to use that knowledge to go ahead and teach our children where they came from, I think that's the most important thing that we can offer for the future. I think the way that we're strong is the people. It's the people who keep us together with the chiefs and clan mothers. They keep us going. And they need us to be strong with them. So if we can all be strong, then we can be a strong nation. Our survival and traditional ways continue to be challenged. There's a constant testing of our nationhood ties because we live in two worlds. Some of our traditions have been carried away by the wind. Some of our old tales have fled into the night. But as we raise our voices in traditional song, dance our ceremonial dances, and speak our traditional language, we know in our hearts that there will always be children of the Onondaga, Haudenosaunee, not sacred relics, but a legacy of strength. There will always be tradition's children.